the Athena 8K mid-range 3D resin printer. Let's take a look. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, this is probably the most difficult video I've done so far, as today I'm going to be talking about a printer that isn't even in production yet. It's actually a Kickstarter, but I'm so convinced by the possibilities of this machine that I feel compelled to talk about it. Firstly, let's get all the nasty money stuff out of the way. The creators of this printer, Concept 3D Systems, have not paid me anything to do this video. I'm not associated with the company in any way at all, and I'll receive no financial gain if this printer does as well as I hope it will. Neither am I here to convince you to back a Kickstarter, though some of you may be watching this video for that very reason, and that's okay. To be upfront, this video may be very boring visually, as I've very little to show you, but I think it's something that will truly fascinate anyone interested in the future development of 3D printing technology, including the use of a force sensor. So let's have a quick rundown of what Athena is. It's a mid-range 10-inch resin printer with a large four-point adjustment build plate. It has stonking linear rails with precisely engineered ball screw control and an 8K screen giving us 28.5 microns of XY resolution. It has built-in Wi-Fi and Ethernet for connectivity and a nice simple user interface designed to make life easier on the user. In terms of appearance, again, it's simple but attractive with a fixed flip lid for maximum convenience. This one, in case like me, you're a little extra picky, isn't exactly the best example as it's traveled around the world a few times to be probed by very clever people. But that stopped when it landed with me. And if you hadn't guessed, it's a prototype and this is actually one of the originals. In terms of print quality, it's as good as any other 29 micron mid-ranger out there, though for me, the parts and build quality are a little more impressive. And right now, you're going to say, so what? Who cares? There's nothing new here. But you'd be so, so wrong. Imagine for a moment that you wanted someone to build you a top-notch resin printer. Who would you turn to? Maybe you'd go to one of those companies out there that's doing a fair job of trying to impress you. But the thing is, whoever you'd choose, their goal has always been the same, to make money because that's what companies do. So what could you do if you wanted something a bit better? Personally, I'd search out those amazing geeks that have been building and tweaking 3D printers before most of us had even heard of them. I'd be looking at the guys that share all the Discord pages on the subject, the guys that give feverishly to open source, the guys that not only realize that Raspberry Pi isn't just a delicious treat, but can also tell you what every component does and explain it to you in such detail that you become a toast before they'd finished. And here they are, Nico and Pascal. Nico's in Canada and Pascal's in Germany. But that didn't stop a pair of like-minded brain buffs hashing out everything that was wrong with resin printing then resolving and even improving upon it. Don't believe me? Here's something simple. How many printers use these removable knobs that invariably get dropped in the resin or eaten by the dog? Why doesn't everyone else do this? It's so simple, and yet it's a perfect example of real user thinking. It's a solid metal construction and inside, the electronics are modular. It's based on Raspberry Pi, and the whole thing was built to be taken apart and put back together again, allowing the user to add upgrades. Do you get that? The intention here from the very beginning is wherever possible, rather than make you buy a brand new model, the Athena can be updated. 
It will be supported with firmware updates, aftermarket upgrades like heaters, resin pumps, etc. as well, of course, as repair items. Distribution centers will be in both Canada and Germany, so you'll receive parts from whichever is closest to you. This isn't aftermarket thinking here, it's forward planning. That's how nerds design a 3D printer. Look at the interface. Yes, it's nice and pretty like so many others, but thanks to the hardware, it's capable of supporting videos. Not only will it take you through the usual problems like plate leveling with similar click-through screens like we've seen elsewhere, this one can contain actual videos. I know because I volunteered to provide some. And no, no one's going to pay me. And now you're saying, it will? You mean it doesn't do that now? Well, no, it doesn't. That's why it's a Kickstarter. The bare bones are there, the important bits that make everything work. Now they need to fund the finishing stages. There's nothing that I'll talk about here that isn't 100% doable right now, but only if they buy in the help to finish. Inside the enclosure are RGB lights, which we've seen before, but these lights change color according to the functions of the printer allowing you to understand what's going on. But in nerd tradition, you can buy your own LEDs and add whatever funky light show effects you want to customize and program, because this system can take it. What slicer can you use? Well, Leechy was involved in the development of Athena, so they're an obvious choice. But Athena is planned to be user-friendly so it's open to any slicer that wants in. There are no restrictions imposed here. However, as all good geeks would, these guys have a built-in slicer. Thanks to the operating system of this printer, the confusingly named Nano DLP, this printer can slice. Shove an SDL on a USB, plug it in and it will slice it. It's not as fast as a PC-based slicer, as it's only powered by the Raspberry Pi, but it does slice. But hold on, you say. USBs are old tech. Athena has both Wi-Fi and Ethernet, enabling you to transfer files from the slicer like Leechy directly to the printer via cable or airwaves. Not only that, you can monitor and alter the progress via your mobile phone. Oh. And if you've started to print something and you suddenly remember that you wanted to tweak the settings a little, you can do that, all without pausing the print, all without ruining the process, because it's got bags of processing power. Does it have a temperature gauge? No, it has two. One on the lights that can double as an enclosure sensor, and one that tips down into the resin for truly accurate readings. It does not come with a camera as standard, but again, thanks to the hardware, there are ports to spare that you can plug in your own camera and through the user interface, even control how things are recorded. When it comes to smells, there will be a vent port at the rear of the enclosure to pump pongs outside. And those clever boffins are already discussing cartridge style filters with refillable cheap medium. These things may be additional extras, or they may be printable files. But this company is committed to the user experience. And I think by now, you're beginning to sense that. I mentioned help earlier with onboard videos, but support will be available 24-7 via Canada and Germany for Athena users. Not only that, it will be possible to allow these support guys to remotely access your printer so they can delve into onboard diagnostics and spot any potential problems. That's not a compulsory thing if you don't fancy that idea, but it's an option available to users in need. The light source is impressively uniform, and I'll let Nico tell you all about that. So this is the LED, a great style LED array that you'll find in a lot of the printers these days. Um, each individual lens is an, its own LED, and um, these are all molded one-piece lenses. And so the problem with these lenses are 
because they're such a large molded acrylic lens, the the molding is not perfect. There's some imperfections, especially where the lines, where the, each cell joins, there's some imperfections. And if you actually have like a sheet of paper over top of one of these LED arrays on your, on your printer, you would probably see variations in these different um, square uh, arrays, these square lenses, um, especially along the lines there. And so that gives you some issues with uniformity, which affects the exposure time for your printer. So there might be slightly higher exposure time over here or slightly lower over here. It all depends on the, the molding of the actual lens. This isn't actually an LED from Athena, um, but it's a similar style. And so it's just a big single cob LED in the middle there. You can see the white and the black uh, PCB. And it has a large single lens, which is kind of like a, um, I don't know what the shape is. It's kind of like an hourglass shape to it. Um, so that helps take light and distribute it properly to the corner so you don't end up with dark corners from the center LED. And as well, there's actually a Fresnel lens that collimates the light coming from this LED. So as the light spreads out from this LED, it'll hit the lens that's just underneath the LCD screen. And that lens will actually redirect the light from being spread to being vertical and uh, keeps it very uniform. So by having just a single LED light source, you're, you're, you're almost guaranteeing that there's not going to be a lot of variation between the different areas of your LCD screen. So that's how Athena um, is able to maintain higher uniformity and actually run at a higher power um, than the, some of these other ones that you see on printers these days. Athena is promised to arrive with enclosure heaters if the funding hits $300,000. But these are community-minded guys, and along with Photonster X3M Snake, who you've seen me mention before, they're already developing a heater that will not only plug into the existing printer board, but will also operate through the user interface. And what this will mean is that you'll be able to set a temperature and walk away. The print won't begin until the ideal temperature is reached. And don't forget, there's already a flip down VAT temperature probe, so you can expect some very accurate measurements and temperature adjustments. However, if the target isn't reached, they've still promised to make heaters available at a small cost. Similarly, if funding hits 500,000, Athena will be fitted with a 12K rather than an 8K screen. These will be the same 19 by 24 XY resolution rectangular pixels that we've seen elsewhere, as there's only one 12K screen available at the moment. Interestingly though, those of you that saw my Saturn 3 Ultra review may remember me mentioning these strange artifacts that I witnessed. And the Concept 3D guys are fairly sure it's the 12K screen that's causing the issue. And they're already looking into it. My money is on these guys finding a true fix long before anyone else. After all, the company selling it didn't seem to notice it before I mentioned it. They just want your money. And so do the Athena boys. But they want it to make the best printer possible. All of the above are very nice features in their own right, and they already set this printer apart from anything else on the market. However, I've saved the best until last, the force sensor. The force sensor is integrated into the Z arm. As I merely touch the arm, you can see this graphic display spike. Now this display won't be on standard models, it's just on this prototype but the same display is actually incorporated into the UI, so you can watch your own peaks and troughs. As we can see, the force sensor is very sensitive. It can feel any push, pull, squeeze or drag upon the plate. And that apparently simple function can give us so much more. All of the features that follow are possible, but some need more work before they're truly ready. Crash detection is an obvious one. Imagine a print has been instructed to start printing too close to the screen. And this could potentially happen with a badly leveled plate or maybe some extreme wobbly in the slicer commands. This has happened and in some cases the valuable screen cracks under the pushing forces of the plate. But with a force sensor that can't happen. 
the plate expects to receive a certain amount of force, and as it is constantly measuring this, if the force is exceeded, crash detection kicks in and stops the plate descending to a point where damage is caused. Simple, safe, and literally a printer life saver. Resin level checking is again very simple. The plate feels when it touches the resin surface, so it knows the upper level of the resin. It feels the pressure of the FEP and knows where the lowest point of the resin is. And it can feel the weight of the resin above it. Throw in a little geeky mathematics and you can not only tell if the tray is empty, you can also calculate if there's enough resin in the tray to complete the printing job. The UI can warn you, for example, that six hours into the print, you might need to top up the resin. No more print failures due to not enough resin. Now, dynamic weight is already active on my prototype. It's still under development, but the differences it makes are incredible. Part of the task of printing is the plate peeling the print away from the FEP. Different resins and different print sizes can affect how high the plate has to travel for this peel to take place. Not only that, some resins are much more viscous than others and time is needed to allow the resin to flow underneath the plate. That's why we have lift and weight times. These are generally set quite high to allow for a margin of safety. With a force sensor, the plate can feel when the print has peeled free. It can also feel the flow of resin beneath it. With dynamic peel and dynamic weight, the sensor can override the set height and wait times, meaning that the plate doesn't have to travel as far or wait around as long. This may seem small and insignificant, but across every layer, this soon adds up, as I've personally seen. For instance, the counts of calibration typically takes me 45 minutes to an hour to print, but with ordinary Soriatec resins, I've seen this figure drop to just 30 minutes. Now that is fast printing, but we'll cover that subject more in a moment. An almost science fiction-like feature of force detection will be the ability to run an auto-resin calibration. You'll just click a button and the plate will do its thing, testing the properties of the resin and sampling reactions to various exposure times. In other words, no more resin setting guesswork. Hours of wasted time will be saved. The feature isn't ready yet, as a great deal of analytical data needs to be gathered and intelligently processed, and optional community participation will be a big part of this. But this won't be just collecting people's personal settings, like we already see Leechy doing, for example. This will be enabling the printer to share specific parameter experiences. A failed print will be just as important as a successful one. And once the properties of various resins are fully understood, we'll be able to say goodbye to guesswork forever. So resin auto calibration, the holy grail of resin printing, is possible once we crunch the numbers. In previous videos, I've said that Athena is capable of auto plate leveling, and technically it is. However, the 3D printing community has all but overwhelmed the Concept 3D guys, asking them to keep the manual adjustment. And I get and understand that. Once a plate is leveled, it probably doesn't need leveling again for months, if at all. Athena was originally designed with a manually adjustable plate because, well, printing nerds demand manual fine tuning. And so Athena will be delivered with a manually adjustable plate. A separate solid plate would need to be manufactured for auto leveling to occur on Athena. However, the Athena guys have told me that if there is sufficient interest in auto leveling amongst its users, they will certainly investigate creating this as an aftermarket add-on for a reasonable price. Failure detection can occur when a plate no longer feels the drag of a print peeling from the plate. 
Standard printers will just carry on, often fooling us into thinking that printing is actually going on until we see the plate hover above the lip of the tray. But the force sensor can automatically pause a print and report an error, allowing us to react more quickly. In essence, it will save us time and frustration. With development, partial failure detection will be possible. So, if a certain percentage of expected drag isn't present, the UI can flag up a message on the screen or even on our phones, telling us what it thinks is going on. Many printers already claim to have power outage and resume printing facilities, but these are generally pretty poor, with thick layer bulges and misalignments being common. But Athena has two advantages over ordinary printers the Raspberry Pi board and the force sensor. The Raspberry Pi actually stores a little power within it, enabling it to power off safely in the event of a power outage. This enables Athena to finish printing a layer and then accurately record its position in relation to the print. So when power returns, it can pick up exactly where it left off. The force sensor can then feel the location of the plate against the print and understand exactly where it needs to place a nice clean layer. Another addition to this same principle is paused printing. Some resins settle over a few hours and with longer prints, it's nice to pause the print, raise the plate, stir the resin and then continue printing. A number of printers claim to already have this facility but again, getting them to match up perfectly often leads to disappointing results. Athena has its superior processing intelligence and a force sensor to know exactly where to resume once pause has been lifted. Finally, I'm going to mention speed. We've seen a lot of printers making claims of reaching 105 mm per hour speeds but this is only possible with special thin resins and layer height increases that result in reduced quality prints. In other words, these are bogus claims as pretty much any printer can do the same thing. Athena, however, are confident that they can make those same speeds with standard resins and standard layer heights. So you'll get the quality and the speed. I've already mentioned how dynamic weight has made impressive improvements into the typical times I usually see my prints take. But now, let's add in a little more nerd knowledge. If you're already into FDM printing, you've probably come across the open source software Clipper, which helps control the speed of the nozzle. Well, our Athena buddies have taken this FDM feature and added it to a resin printer. Through this, Athena can accelerate and decelerate the plate much more rapidly, reducing the time spent in moving the plate between layers significantly, all whilst carefully feeling for the stability of the print on the plate. Again, this means small time savings between each layer, but across all the layers and in combination with other features, this leads to real, genuine speed increases all realistically possible. Now, genuinely, I'd estimate that I've covered about 50% of what Athena is capable of. But this video is already uncomfortably long for me and I've got to stop waffling at some point. So, are you getting it now? This is a printer designed by people that love printing. It's a printer that does not void the warranty if you open up the case because they actually want you to do that. They want you to be able to add extras and swap out outdated parts. They want you to customize it, ensuring that it matches your needs and style. And above all, they want you to love your printer as much as they do. Yes, these Kickstarter prices aren't the cheapest, but these guys are fitting the best equipment they can so that they can continue to morph Athena into a better and better product. So where you might possibly buy another brand at a cheaper price, in six months, you'll probably be buying another. 
all because of relatively small technological changes. But if and where possible, Athena will adapt and improve much more cost effectively. They want you to know that support will always be available to the point where, with your permission, they can even access your printer remotely and find faults other companies will just blame upon your alleged misuse. They're building a community around this printer where you'll be able to get the friendship, camaraderie and support that other companies can only make fake claims about. And it really doesn't matter if you don't believe me about that because it's already started. You don't have to join in, but it's nice to know it's there. People from your area talking your language and having the same experiences as you. So why have I talked about a Kickstarter that's just another 10 inch printer? Simple, because it's not just another 10 inch printer. I've been talking to these guys now for a few months. I've seen their passion. Yes, they'd like to earn money, wouldn't we all? But that genuinely isn't the driving force behind Athena. Yes, it's costly because, well, come on, it's hard to compete with the prices those excellent Chinese companies can manufacture for. But also, it's that little bit more expensive because it's as much a building block as it is a printer. It has more toys than you can fill a pram with, and it has space for many, many more for you to add on if you wish to. The truth is, I can't afford to back them, and I'm damn lucky to receive a prototype for free. But I tell you this, I will be contributing. If, like me, you'd like to see these guys produce the printers we really want to own, then maybe you can slip them a small donation too. They deserve it. They've pushed the industry five years forward in a single bound. Imagine how many printers Eligor and Ecubic, for example, would have bought out just to reach this same level. We're looking at the Mars 78 and the Photon Infinity. But these companies will soon copy now. They've got to. Now you know what's possible and so do they. All because of printing geeks around the world chatting about making the perfect printer. So there you have it. Not really a review, nothing like in depth, but hopefully I've helped you to see what I see here. And honestly, what I see is amazing. Please feel free to ask any questions you want below. And I'm sure that Nico and Pascal will be happy to join me in answering them here for you. So there we have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this epic video. Take care and thanks for watching.